watching Adam's work, I mean, there was a boyish openness about him that was so sweet. That was hard to be mean to such a sweet <laughs> little thing, but <laughs> Dev Ben made me do it. <laughs> I mean, when I first read it, I just thought this is exactly the kind of thing I, I've i always wanted to do. It's, the, it's exactly the kind of thing I like to watch uh, just as a fan and audience member. It's what I gravitate towards and not really something I'd had the, the chance to do. Um, plus, in, in, in it just aside from the genre itself and the and the story itself it was a great character. We're kind of world building. We're creating this this whole weird tone and world, but within the confines of that, just the humanity of the characters uh, that Dan created um, and that Ben kind of had an eagle eye on the whole time was what continually surprised me. In a way, I felt a lot like the audience that every episode I would get would be like, whoa, what's happening? Where are people going? And I kind of jumped in and agreed before I knew all of that. Hello, my name is Mark S. And I have, of my own free accord, elected to undergo the procedure known as severance. I give consent to sever my memories between my work life and my personal life. I acknowledge that once the procedure is complete, I will be unable to access my personal memories whilst on the severed floor. Say gratitude. Nor will I retain work memories. Hey. Sorry. When I return home at the end of the day. I make these statements freely. You know, what was also fascinating to me as an actor was like, we picked up Rickon's book. There's like many, many pages already written or if I'd ask about Kier and the backstory and the spirituality kind of early Kier methodology, uh, I would get so much information. Yeah. And on the set, you would open a drawer and there would be all of these incredible props that you probably would never see. But as an actor, you had them, and then if you needed to use them in the scene, there they were. Uh, it was, it was yeah, just it, really amazing. It really, you're right. It was a complete world that we were stepping into as far as just stepping on the set. You, there was really nowhere you could turn where you'd see any, any cracks in the facade. It was, it was, it was complete, uh, which was incredibly helpful. Kat and her team were incredible and they, and they, those keyboards that you were talking about, um, we, you know, uh, uh, Zach and and Britt and John and I had to actually refine those numbers. There actually is a uh, computer program this incredible team came up with inside of those ancient, you know, uh, those specifically designed but retro looking computers. And so the actual process of refining the numbers uh, was something that we sat there and did for hours and hours, and we all became pretty good at it. But the the trackball <laughs> that's that's on the computer itself is ergonomically really awkward. So if I feel like if we had to shoot one more week, we all would have gotten this bizarre uh, carpal tunnel in a new <laughs> part of our hands. Uh, I didn't even know all that. That's so cool. Adam was really good about. Okay, where were we before? Where were we after? What's going on now? Here's where my, you know, we would have kind of all support each other about what we remembered was going on. And we had a great, you know, um, script supervisor that helped with that too. And Dan and, and Ben were very on point about that. And there were certain kind of specific things that my character was working on and then big things that happen at work that then impacted the next period for her. So there were some, you know, definite demarcations, I think, to kind of hold on to. It could get a little confusing because we were going back and forth, but we we're also shooting the whole season at once. So we could be shooting episode three in the morning and nine in the afternoon sometimes and going back and forth from 
any to Audi. The thing that that I kind of ended up finding really helpful was when we started shooting the the elevator shots where we sort of go from any to Audi or vice versa and having to do it really fast like that kind of brought it brought the differences between them into sharp focus at least for for me and it kind of became like a math problem like it was just a matter of like one is 40 odd years of life experience and everything that that goes with that and the other one is sort of a more or less a clean slate like two and a half years old and really limited experience and that internal shift um having to like figure out how because we kind of they built this whole rig for that elevator shot with like part of a, the background of the elevator and then this big track with the for the camera and the going in and and sort of stepped into that not really knowing how we were gonna do it and ben had the idea maybe your eyes kind of flutter and, and so we kind of went with that and and we would jump in and do a few of them every couple of weeks and it was kind of a great process with ben because it was just sort of let's just screw around and see what feels right and so we eventually landed on on what we landed on um which was really fun to to figure it out and and once we landed on what we wanted how we wanted to do it i wanted i i could have done it all day because it it, it never felt all, you know, a hundred percent. It was like, it became like this obsessive thing, wanting to get the shot exactly right. And the, the, the turn from one to the other exactly right. Um, and we ended up doing a bunch of them and they're kind of sprinkled throughout the season. But you also had to think about where the any is exactly at that moment in that episode. And, and, and then where he, the, the Audi is when he kind of transforms what his last mm -hmm. moment was that morning what was going on for him so it was taking those those two things in, into account and it was just really fun but that really helped kind of really distill the the um the shift down to down to one quick moment i confer upon you the advanced role of department chief congratulations a handshake is available upon request thank you may i have a handshake I had to get over being a little freaked out that I was going to be <laughs> working with Patricia. That was, that took a while, but it actually helped because at least for Ms. Cobell, um, you know, she is, you know, for all intents and purposes, any Mark's uh, mother figure. This is his boss, but also the, the, ultimate authority figure there's no one higher than her at least in in their in mdr's world and she you know what she says and does has huge huge consequence for them and their their lives it all kind of begins and ends with ms cobell i had done research on cults and businesses and corporations and armies and all these kind of different corporate structures and what upper management is like what does that mean to her self-esteem, blah, blah, blah. But, you know, in a way, you could argue that maybe Cobell is like the cold mother, that you never know exactly where you stand and you never can get their approval all the way. And then on the outside, Selvig is kind of playing with this, you know, discombobulated kind of trying to be warm, um, but she's putting it on because it's like a character, but she's not really an actor. So she's making this kind of thing up of this fumbling, bumbling neighbor who can insinuate themselves into your life, which is a different kind of mommy issue thing, right? It's like, so you have yeah. these two dynamics that are like, because also Mark is so open and he is a two-year-old inside and Harmony's colder inside. And then you go outside and he's colder outside and Zelvik yeah. is warmer outside. It's like the shifting dance that they do together to get what they try to get from each other, or whatever they need from each other, whether they accomplish it or not, is this kind of different dances. Yeah. And over the course of the season, any Mark becomes disillusioned and 
uh, with with Ms. Cobell, in fact, heartbroken by Ms. Cobell, uh, by what he, his, what his, because she is his worldview and that gets uh, shaken. And so he's, by the end of the season, he's uh, completely uh, disillusioned with her. Whereas on the outside, Audi Mark, slowly over the course of the season sort of warms up to Ms. Selvig and uh, lets her in a little bit. And so by the end, they're, they're these kind of funny friends. For me, it's like really neither of these characters that I'm playing that are all the, the same person, I'm really even know themselves because they're kind mm. of created and forged from this corporation and what the value systems is of this corporation and what the accomplishments are of this corporation. And in a way, the only moment I feel like she really has that true is when she loses her own footing in a moment in the party sequence right? and kind of forgets which one she is and who she's supposed to be and is just in the moment a little bit. Yeah, that moment when you, when you say, get away from them, Mark, at the party, I remember it was getting chills uh, when we were shooting it. And that's like right before Mark turns into any Mark. That's the last mm -hmm. thing that that uh, that happens right before then. So he doesn't get a chance to react to that, to Ms. Selvig having this uh, opinion about uh, about what he should do uh, at, uh, at Lumen. I don't really know where we're going with this because, I mean, I do know some some things that were said to me early on, but I just feel again, it is kind of blind faith and just jumping back in. And, and again, even though this lady is in control, I feel like she is so out of control. And I feel as an actor on this project, I'm very out of control again. And I was willing to be like, I'm going to jump into this weird story that I have no idea where it's going and figure it out as we go along because I do believe in all of you as artists. It was so much like, so exciting and enjoyable every day to kind of see what people had manifested and the world that these scenes were taking place in. Yeah, yeah we were in good hands and, and uh, kind of felt that way from the very start. Though this experience is in Heli's honor, I urge all the refiners to take advantage of the opportunity presented. <laughs> Whoa, wow. Okay. <laughs> she is. She got it. Mark's dance moves don't get better as the day goes on. I, I found I found that to be true. Uh, yeah, I mean, it was super fun. And something that was really cool was, you know, in MDR, there are those fluorescent lights that we'd been working under for, I don't know, eight months by the time we filmed the music dance experience. And Ben uh, had kept it from us that he had, uh, that they had rigged up, the gaffers had rigged up disco lights up with the fluorescent lights so Tramel could could hit the remote and suddenly we're in this kind of disco environment he got some genuine reactions on camera <laughs> to that but plus these characters had never really heard this music before or who knows if they've even danced before i decided my character had only like danced in private just to see what it was like because what you've heard about dancing but it's not like these people, um, the innies have ever been dancing. So <laughs> this is a really new experience for them. And an MDE is something that Mark had heard about, but wasn't sure if it was a real thing. And so it's sort of this forbidden, incredible, mysterious uh, thing that they're, it's like winning the lottery for them. And I love that this weird corporation does these weird things. I know, it's so mean, weird. You know? That like this is how far you can go safely funny enough that that it was sort of like 
this is the ceiling for as naughty as you can get. And that's the moment when Kelly and Mark sort of lock in on, on each other a bit and just moving in the music sort of opens up this crush they have on each other and it sort of uh, brings it to fruition a little bit. Yeah, and the experimentation of that, of like yeah. what happens, you know, when you open up movement and music and whose personality is what. It's what I've always said. I've, I've, I've been saying it for years, open it up to music and movement, you've, you've got it made. <laughs> it's all you need. <laughs>